Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about an interesting topic. It's about capnography. So let's get started. The simplest way to measure carbon dioxide is using color capnometry. And you're all familiar with the device that we use during intubation. It's a pH sensitive paper which turns from purple to yellow when exposed to carbon dioxide. If you looked at the instrument a little bit more closely, it actually gives you the color changes with the concentration of carbon dioxide. There are a few things to remember in color capnometry. First thing is that the color may not change if you are intubating somebody during a cardiac arrest. The color might not be bright yellow. It might be some shade of yellow. That is because if you are not having enough pulmonary perfusion for removal of carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide strip may not capture it. Other thing to remember is make sure that you watch for the color change for at least five to six breaths as even the esophageal intubation can sometimes lead to color changes for the first few breaths. The other method is volumetric capnography. Volumetric capnography can give you the value of the PCO2. Carbon dioxide selectively absorbs at around 4.3 nanometer which, which lies in infrared region of the light so your CO2 concentration depends upon the absorption at this wavelength. There are few other molecules that can absorb at 4.3 nanometers and water vapor is the most important one. So condensation at the sensor can falsely increase the PCO2 value. There are two types of volumetric capnography. One is mainstream capnography and the side stream and the only difference between them is where the sensor is placed. Mainstream is used mostly in the intubated patient while the side stream is used in intubated and non-intubated patients and these are the how the instruments look like the common problem with either of these methods is secretions and condensation in addition the mainstream capnography method can add dead space to the patient's breathing circuit as shown in the green area the side stream capnography also has some problems and especially the problem comes with the plugging of the sample line by the secretions and condensation. Let's talk about how a normal capnogram looks like and understand different components of a capnogram. So on the right side we've got three alveoli and a CO2 sensor. As you know that the PCO2 of dead space is zero and P alveolar CO2 is equal to P arterial CO2 and which is approximately 45 in a normal person. So the first phase of capnogram is exhalation and when you exhale the first thing to come out is the anatomical dead space that's the phase one and since there is no CO2 in the portion your first part of the capnogram will be at zero. As you exhale the CO2 sensor will pick up the alveolar CO2 and it will increase to that level and there will be a transition phase that's called phase two as you continue to exhale alveolar emptying will occur and the co2 sensor will plateau out at p alveolar co2 this is phase three and when you start inhaling back again there's no co2 in that air so your capnogram will come back to zero so let's understand the different part of the capnogram again first part is your anatomical dead space emptying that's phase one phase two is the transition between the anatomical dead space emptying and the alveolar emptying and the alpha is the angle between phase two and phase three you reach an alveolar plateau in a normal person that would be equal to p alveolar co2 which also equals to p arterial co2 highest portion of the capnogram is your antidal carbon dioxide Phase 4 is the inhalational part that occurs after expiration is complete and beta is the angle between phase 3 and phase 4. Let's add some dead space to the alveoli and see what happens. So now we have got one alveoli with dead space. Now the PCO2 as you know will be 0. So the first part of exhalation still remains the same as your anatomical dead space comes out. In second phase of capnogram the carbon dioxide from the normal alveoli is diluted from the air from the dead space alveoli so your co2 sensor will read a little lower 
than your actual p alveolar co2 so the degree of dilution will depend upon how much alveolar dead space you are encountering your end tidal therefore will be lower than p alveolar co2 if you add more dead space there will be more dilution of the alveolar co2 by the dead space alveoli so your end tidals will be even lower so the more alveolar dead space the lower end tidal co2 will be one of the things that we have assumed in this scenario is all alveoli must empty simultaneously now this is not always the case let's understand what happens when alveoli have different time constants here we have three different alveoli with different time constants so they have different level of p alveolar co2 the co2 in dead space is zero so the first part of the capnogram still looks the same because this is the expulsion of the anatomical dead space air from trachea and bronchi onto the co2 sensor the second part of the capnogram that's phase two has a lower slope than previous as the air from different alveoli mix together in different proportion and as you continue to exhale that mixing does not end so the phase three sometimes is unable to reach a plateau so let's understand what really happened here we in this figure we have got three alveoli with homogeneous emptying they have similar time constant and similar vq ratios when you exhale the co2 sensor initially picks up the dead space air followed by alveolar air the transition between the alveolar air and anatomical dead space air is pretty sharp so co2 sensor changes from 0 to 45 pretty rapidly so the slope of phase 2 is almost vertical the height of the phase 3 will be equal to your end tidal co2 and in this case will be equal to 45 as there is no dead space if you got homogeneous emptying and a similar time constant but we have a dead space alveoli the alveolar air during exhalation is going to get diluted the junction between the anatomical dead space and alveolar air remains similar so your co2 level rises rapidly however will not be able to achieve pco of 45 because the alveolar air gets diluted by the dead space air so the slope of phase 2 remains the same while the height of the phase 3 drops down in the second scenario let's look at heterogeneous emptying with alveoli with different time constant and different vq ratios when you exhale, the alveolar air is now a mixture of different types of alveoli in different phases of expiration. Alveoli with smaller time constant will tend to empty rapidly compared to the ones with a longer time constant. So the transition between anatomical dead space air and the alveolar air is more gradual. So the slope of phase two is much lower than the seen in normal conditions. So whenever you see the slope of phase to be more slopey, you're looking at alveoli with different time constants. This is mostly seen in patients with obstructive lung disease. Okay, so let's recapitulate. Let's understand the difference between the two different type of dead spaces. The way you figure out dead space is if your end tidal CO2 is unable to reach the PaCO2, which happens in both the conditions. In the alveoli with different time constant, you will notice decrease in slope of phase 2, loss of inflection point, and unable to achieve plateau in phase 3 as the obstruction gets more severe. Alveoli with different time constants is typically seen in severe COPD exacerbation, and as the exacerbation increases, the, the slope of phase 2 becomes lower. In conditions like pulmonary embolism, the alveoli have similar time constant and you will not notice much change in slope of phase 2. There are a couple of mechanisms of uneven ventilation. You can have alveoli with different time constant, you can have alveoli with obstruction and increased stiffness. Other conditions like emptying of your alveoli into dilated bronchial tubes can lead to uneven ventilation. You also have different P alveolar CO2 depending on your VQ ratios. So if you're dealing with a dead space alveoli with VQ of infinity, your P alveolar CO2 is zero, that is similar to air. While on the complete shunt side, your P alveolar CO2 is equal to P venous CO2, that's around P45.
in a normal alveoli you have got p alveolar co2 about 40 millimeters of mercury and as your dead space component increases or your vq increases your p alveolar co2 slowly drops down now we know what different component of capnogram are and what causes them we'll talk about different clinical conditions to help you make a diagnosis we'll talk about this in next lecture thank you Thank you.